Okay, let's figure out what's going on here. Here we go. Hopefully you guys can hear me. It's the other thing I need to try out. All right, so we're waiting on everybody else to join us. Um, we are early, so we won't be starting for about six to seven minutes. Um, just doing a little bit of setup stuff here. So give me a minute. Oh, I am live. Okay, I can see myself. So this is good. Um, see what happens here. It looks like I'm frozen now. Am I really live? Let's see. Live on Facebook. We are recording. Oh, and I can hear it. Okay, so let's share this out. Invite the group members. Hey, Karen. All right. So I'm just doing the setup stuff and I'm waiting for Anita and Amanda to jump on and we will be started. And now Sirius started copying everything I'm typing. That's weird. <laughs> but welcome, welcome. All right, so let's see here. Hey, Amanda, let me figure out, okay, let me promote you to panelist, and you should, hey, I can't hear you, but that might be my side. Now, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Um, okay, cool. All right, so I am, we have a couple people watching live, so I've going to put the Facebook feedback on my phone so I can watch messages. But Anita okay. is trying to get in now. So we've got like two, three minutes. So let me see here. Um, Oh, how did you just click on the link? I mean, yeah, I just clicked on the link and then it said something like enter your email. Okay. All right.
the URL to join. So did you, are you streaming this to Facebook too, you said? I'm streaming to Facebook, just within the secret group. Okay. And from there, if we want to share out, we can share out. Cool. I hadn't got that far yet, but I was <laughs> um, thinking about sharing out to like the my business page. So if you want to do the same, you can like share it out. How do I do, do you know how to do that? Um, from my phone is how I normally do it. So what I normally do is I go to like back to mom group and then the video will be there on your phone and you just hit the share button and then it normally will let you share. Oh, out. cool. Okay. Let me go get it. Thank you for joining us, everybody. That's like up and running. We are getting all set up. So just now eight o'clock. Um, let me check. All right. So as you guys um, have questions tonight or if you have suggestions as we get talking, um, we're waiting on Anita to get on the live chat with us. But what I want you to know is you can put your comments right into the live stream on Facebook and I'll monitor those as we go and then we'll raise those questions up. And if we um, can put your comments. Oh, I hear myself through your phone. Yeah. Uh, uh, the other thing is if we have comments after the live stream, like if people are watching this on a replay, then we will get your questions answered tomorrow. So don't feel like you can't comment just because it's not live anymore. We will definitely get you um, information back. So we've got people on watching and then, oh, I wanted to... Let's see here. Okay. Well, curious what happens to Anita. Um, Okay, that's done. And let me flip back and see if Anita messaged me back. All right, she's going to come on in a second. But in the meantime, so let's do this while we're waiting for Anita. Um, I am Tiffany Hinton, and yes, I'm in a hotel room. So if you don't know my story, our house was flooded recently. We've been living in a hotel for about four weeks now. And so my children are kind of sequestered off to the side to be quiet. But if one of them run through the back, I apologize now. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, so I am the co-founder and president of GF Mom Certified. We are a business that promotes gluten-free lifestyles through cookbooks, uh, education, speaking, training, recipes, all of that fun stuff and travel nationally. And while I'll actually be in Richmond, Virginia this Saturday and Sunday cooking for Gluten-Free and More magazine. So if you're on the East Coast and can get to Richmond, you can come um, out and taste some great food and see me live. But Amanda, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm happy to be here and excited to kick off this week. My girls go back to school tomorrow, so this is a, a really great time for me as well. Um, my name is Amanda Hinman, and I am the founder of the Hinman Holistic Health Institute. And I work with moms that are looking to improve their kids' health and, and really just boost their confidence. Um, you know, we all know it's like to see our kids struggle if they're feeling anxious about something or just emotionally challenged or have 
anything from a physical situation to an emotional situation, it, it tears at our hearts as a mom. So I've helped coach hundreds of moms to feel empowered because then they have the simple tools and they know what they can do as their role to support their kids' best health. So I'm super excited to be here today and kind of support all of you, all of us. We're all in the same boat going back to school. So it's a fun time. Yes, it is. Um, all right, there's Anita jumping in. So let me promote her over. Perfect timing. And we should be all good. Am I in? You are in. So. Yay! Yay! There's a slight delay on Facebook, but that's okay because I know it'll eventually catch up. Um, the other thing is we just did mini intros, so do you want to introduce yourself, Anita? Wow, look at that spotlight. Ow! <laughs> My name is, yes, I will be happy to. I'm so sorry if I'm coming in all flustered, but, you know, I realize I have a new phone, and I didn't put in Zoom in my new phone. I needed to do that, so here we are. Uh, okay, so short intro is my name is Anita Myers. Where's the camera? Where am I looking over here? <laughs> <laughs> my name is Anita Myers. I am the owner of Interscope Consulting. I provide coaching, training, and consulting for all sorts of individuals from the college arena all the way till however old you are that you want to be able to upgrade your lifestyle and really reach to a higher success level. And um, I take a lot of joy in getting myself involved in life management, dating and relationship victories and success and uh, mindful parenting. It's very important for us to be able to have our parenting skills in a upper level so that we could truly be mindful and aware the, of what our contribution is to our children and what we should be receiving back. Awesome. We're so glad to have you on with us tonight as well. So I'm going to run this a little bit like a, a Q&A for a little bit, and then you guys can each kind of answer the questions and we'll go around Robin. And then I am monitoring the Facebook feed. So as people that are watching us live decide that they have a question, we'll address that as well. So first question I'm curious about is based on a comment I read earlier today on our Back to Mom group is what are you doing to prepare so you're not struggling the morning of to get your kids kind of out the door? Get them out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, it's funny. We, we just ran through our routine um, tonight. So I have four daughters and they range in age from kindergarten to seventh grade. And obviously, you know, there's different responsibilities and different things that five-year-olds can do compared to my 12-year-old, right? Um, but they, they're... We're really at like about, I'm, I'm all about, you know, setting up simple habits for success. And I think Tiffany, you can probably subscribe to this too. So like, for example, my three older daughters, the second grader, the fifth grader and the seventh grader make their own lunches the night before. So we, and I always have cut up fresh fruit and veggies and stuff kind of already in pre, pre-cut containers. So I have a container in my fridge. So it's easy for them to grab it but having that stuff packed the night before is huge for the morning and then they lay out their clothes the night before so that's like our biggest tip and it kind of takes a little practice to get into the routine of it but once they once that's like just the way things are I, I don't know for us that seems to work really well awesome so making lunches the night before and then setting out your clothes and you actually have kids that pack their own lunch which I find awesome because we still struggle with that yeah. I know you have a daughter as well. I do. I have my daughter and, you know, she, Amanda really shared what the, the, I think the default can be. And she really puts it in a great way. And when you have a lot more children, it does propel one to think of all sorts of ways to be able to get everyone in sync through the house with the bathrooms and the food and everything. So really great great work that you're doing, Amanda. For me, as, a, as having one and only, uh, you know, I do many of the same things, but, uh, you know, what's really nice where I'm involved with is when I work with one, I have to think about my time with her because I spend so much time with her that, you know, sometimes I might, I might fall, uh, falter on 
I stay up late because I stay up late because that's my thing. I'm a mom. I have things to do. I want to just stay up late because I'm a grown up. But when I have my daughter who's maturing along with me, you know, because she's in a household of just my husband and myself, I tend to forget that it's time for her to go to bed. I start to say, oh, you can watch another show with me because it's who I hang out with. So I have to really engage myself in a sense of discipline to remember that there's a time where, you know, the, 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 the mom of me and the Anita me has to be able to remember to have that place for myself and have my me time and then provide that, that structure for my daughter so that she can brush her teeth at a certain time along with, you know, making sure he's, she's getting herself ready for bed. And I think that, um, when you plan ahead, when you know, let's say school starting, the hardest thing is that our brain as parents, we, we see the vision of it, but then we get so many different things involved that keep us from going to that vision. So it really is about making sure that we can stick to what we say we're going to do and pick those dates that we're going to start doing them. And then, yes, I love that Amanda has her daughter being independent. And a lot of us moms, we, we, we enjoy being moms. We enjoy it. We want to take care of our children. But if we do engage ourselves in helping our kids to be independent, we'd be really surprised what they can truly do. Plus, if you have multiple, they can all help one another. So you don't have to do as much. And your job is to train them to be independent. So it's really beautiful that you do that and having them uh, make their own lunches. My daughter did that. She... <laughs> It was, I, I think I posted it on my own page where it was like, I felt like chopped liver. I had this whole thing going on because she told me I've got my breakfast. Listen, I got it. I got breakfast. I got snack and I got my lunch. I'm going to take care of it today. You don't have to do anything, mom. You're good. And I felt so uneasy. Oh, <laughs> You know, I should be celebrating this, right? But I felt like, uh, come on, let me just do one thing. But I loved, I did, it, it, the truth of it was, I was very impressed. I was really excited. And I loved seeing her independence because she was picking what she wanted. Everything was, as a mother, my job is to make sure I have it laid out and positioned in the refrigerator. Yes. So it's e easy pickings and you're done. And it, it can, it, it, it seems like it's an overwhelming task to do, but quite frankly, we are all so powerful. All we got to do is open up that refrigerator and reorganize it. But when you start going in there, you're going to see how it just all comes together. And there's tons of ideas on Pinterest. I'm sure Amanda's got some great ideas and Tiffany too, that um, we just make it easy access. Yeah. I think that'll be the best thing. So that happened with me as well. Yeah. So one of the talking about the refrigerator and preparing, one of the things that we do as a family actually is on Sundays, Sundays are our family day, but part of Sundays is getting food prepped. So that means when I come back from the wholesale grocer with, you know, vegetables and fruits, the girls help prepare those. Um, they make up like fruit salads and prepackage it into jars. They, they help cut all of that up. So it does make it easier. Um, I tried the pack your own lunch this summer and actually got a note from summer camp that they didn't have enough food. And I was like, well, they packed their own food. Oh. <laughs> so I'm sorry <laughs> they showed up with not enough. That was my one trial. Um, we'll try it again maybe in six months. But yeah, they, I guess, didn't put enough in the box that day. Um, but okay, so now when you pack the night before, that allows you to free up time the next day, right? For morning self-care. We're talking about self-care tonight. So mm -hmm. what does that allow you to do in the morning when you've already done the work the night before for yourself, for you, the mom? Oh, you I have first, to, yeah. I, I've got, a, I wrote a lot of notes down because I get really passionate about having self-care because that, that's really something that I, um, I'm really focused on it because I had to do it for myself. And when I see that it works for me, I want to share with others and give them the education as well. So I'm going to look at my notes because I wrote a lot down. I want to make sure I can pinpoint a few things that are really important because when you do engage yourself in self-care, I think, I think the most important thing is to really get your brain. I'm all about training the brain because our mind is set up in a way where I, I look at it like a big field with lots of things in the field. And when you want to create a path in that field, you just have to start walking down that path. And in the beginning, you don't see that path created. But if you keep doing the same thing consistently over and over again, suddenly what happens in that path? You start to get the path that starts to show up. You start to see the dirt and then suddenly the path is there. And it gets very easy to walk back and forth through that field. So in the same token, when I have the self-care thing, I know that over the years, I start to read different types of books that engage in self-care. 
And one of the things I thought was very important was for me to be able to just stop in the morning. You know, I have a kind of like a, a gratitude breathing exercise that I do. And it's not very lengthy. It's maybe, you know, 10 seconds to a minute, depending on my mood and what I've got available, which I normally have the time available. Now I wake up earlier. I decided to wake up earlier. And um, there's a book called Miracle Morning. If you haven't read it, pick it up and listen to the story of what the author shares. But one of the things he talks about is waking up earlier than you normally do. And it seems ridiculous and crazy, but having that extra 30 minutes, hour, whatever you have engages you in doing things. So I started my breathing where I just kind of wake up and I sit at the edge of my bed and just kind of keep myself in a relaxed position, close my eyes. And I kind of take, I don't kind of, I take in a very conscious, deep breath, fill in my lungs with great new air. Cause I'm alive. I'm well, I'm here and I'm ready to take on the day. So I breathe in that great air. I breathe out that air and I make sure I kind of welcome my morning. Then I get up and I go and I, get myself ready to go where, you know, I brush my teeth, do my thing. And I like to go and grab myself um, a glass of warm. uh, This is a longer story, but in short, uh, some warm water. Uh, If you like cold water and that's your thing, that's okay. But um, uh, lukewarm water, body temperature water with some lemon. And I just drink that up as my very first thing I put in my system so that I, I can kind of cleanse my body. And then I go about just taking my time doing whatever it is I want to do. I might read something. I might go on a TED Talks and find a topic that's important to me. I find the things that are part of my, the community of information that I want to put myself in so that I could start my day right. And maybe sometimes I look for quotes, things that speak to me, and um, I let that carry me through the day. I love it. So, yeah. Amanda, what do you, how does it make you have time for self-care? Oh my gosh. I mean, my morning routine self-care is why I started it, gosh, four years ago. And that was a game changer. I mean, part of it was, I mean, in all honesty, part of it was getting to the point of where I didn't have little, for so long I had little ones that the first baby crying was the one that would wake me up every morning. And that's how I would wake up is to a baby crying for eight years, (laughs) you know, between, between all my kids being two years apart. So it was like this, this, this new experience to then get to the point of where I could choose just like you do, Anita, I choose to wake up at 515 so that I'm up before my kids even wake up before they would naturally get up out of of bed so that I have time for myself. And that has been a game changer because my routine is, it's kind of repetitious, I guess. It's, you know, I do the same kind of things just because they work. And the first thing I start with is journaling. When I wake up first thing in the morning, it's like, brain dump. Sometimes I'm really inspired. And that's when I find I have my most creative moments or even just kind of cataloging, like what's what I was thinking about or what dreams I had or anything that came up. So that's kind of fun. And other times in all honesty, like even this morning, actually, I woke up with a little bit of like nerves thinking about like the new kids, the girls, their new teachers, the new classes. So even when I have things that I'm kind of stressing about, still just giving myself that 10 minutes to journal about it almost like gets it out of my head. Like it almost releases some of those anxious thoughts or those worried thoughts that I had when those are the moments. But journaling for me has really been like such a fun and interesting way to get to know myself and be more self-aware. And like you said, Anita, talking about the power of our brain, it's, it's interesting to really see reflected back on the page what it is that you're thinking about, right? What is, where is your mind going when you wake up and start your day and, and positive? or negative. And then I've kind of started the same type of a gratitude practices as I'm journaling and just kind of writing down what comes to mind, just kind of letting the pen flow. At the end, before I wrap up, I write specifically, intentionally, one thing that I love about my husband and my four daughters. So just one simple thing. It could be like, oh my gosh, I loved how Taylor just like totally tripped over her foot yesterday and was laughing and like, you know, silly with herself. Or it could be like, I loved how Julia took a moment to give Isabel a hug because she saw that she was sad about this. It, it can be a very small little thing, but just setting that tone on purpose to focus on the things that I love and appreciate about my family. I, I, it sounds strange, but it just makes it easier to like then walk out of the room and start the day looking at the best in my kids and looking at the best in my spouse. So that's my I know, first thing. I don't think that sounds strange. I think that's beautiful. You know, you, you, what you did was, 
create your morning. You set your morning. Like, you know, I have, there's this whole thing that everyone's been probably seeing that's, on, that's posted on Facebook uh, a lot, which is making your bed. There was this whole thing. A Navy admiral had um, done a, a, a graduation speech. And one of the things that he shared that was ap- – he's a Navy SEAL too. He made it really important for people to know that one of the first things you need to do in the morning before you leave your home is to make your bed. And the whole point of it was you know, no one thinks about making your bed, especially when you're a mom with so many children. You're like, I'm out. I'm done. But if you actually did – if we look at our situation, if we actually made our bed – the idea is that we've accomplished one thing. You set the day. You started the day yeah. knowing that you did one thing. But you know, when you come back into your bedroom, it, it's kind of like going back into a hotel. You're like, oh, the bed's made. This is great. Like it's made it really nicely. But you know what you're doing with the journaling? Um, I I herald you, and I would always, I would absolutely recommend. You know that if you do want to find the time to write and get that stuff down regardless of what time of the day is for you. I love that you do that in the morning because you're getting that out of your system now. Um, that's a great way to set your day because you're thinking of really good, positive things before you close that book and you go and you start being the mom that you are. I think it's totally, wonderful. Totally. That and the other thing is moving my body. I always, sometimes it's just literally five minutes if that's all I have. Many days I spend a, at least a good 25, 30 minutes. But if I don't have that, I just always make sure I go through at least some sun salutations, some stretches and get my body kind of moving. And I feel like it kind of then integrates, you know, get the thoughts in a good place, get the body moving and some energy flowing. And then it's like, okay, I'm ready. I can, I can approach my day. Just like you said, Anita. And the cool thing is my daughters have kind of not kind of, they have, they've seen that this is just the way of life. So a lot of times they come in and they're doing the yoga sun salutations with me, you know, and they're joining me. So it's really cool. It is your way of life. That's beautiful. It's a way Mm -hmm. of life. And that's, I think, really key in what you're doing, Tiffany, you're helping with your platform here to really get your, the, the folks that are on here today that are watching, you know, write down what's my way of life and start creating that with the help of what Tiffany and Amanda and myself, whatever we're saying, I think it's incredible if we can tr- truly create what the new way of life is going to be for you. Cause we're getting towards the end slowly. I mean, I really love that tomorrow we should make time. that like the journaling question for the group. What is your way of life? Yeah. Well, last week on my, my page, I had asked people like, I think I even posted it in this group. Like, what do you choose today? You know, do you choose joy? Do you choose happiness? What do you choose? And I love that. Um, are you making a note, Anita? Um, what is I your am. way of life? <laughs> right. Awesome, because I might forget. Um, so personally for me, I have to take my health first a lot of times before other things. And in that, it's food. So if I don't start my morning with a smoothie or a green juice or some sort of like four cups of vegetables, and some people are probably like, what? Seriously? But I do sit all down. It's not like I'm sitting there eating a salad in the morning but I have to get those vegetables in my body early enough. Um, Or like yesterday I turned into a grouch by 11 o'clock and I realized at noon when we were headed to the pool, I was like, I drank coffee first thing this morning. And my husband's like, you did what? I'm like, I did. And I don't know why, but for whatever reason, because we're at a dislocated area, we're somewhere different. It was just, he came back with two cups of coffee from the lobby and I did. And so I realized yesterday, and it kind of hit me this morning, because when I wake up, I tend to sit there, I say my prayers before I get out of bed, before my feet hit the ground. I'm somebody that is always saying what I'm grateful for, declaring what's going to happen in the day, and kind of just going through that that declarations and intentions. And so, um, and then I move on to have a smoothie. And then if time allows, I prefer to do my workout and my fitness 25, 30 minutes before I go shower. There are mornings where it doesn't happen. And then we do it like 3 30, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And that's when the girls join. If I'm, if I'm working out in the afternoon, then they're all about it. They're trying to do cardio and yeah. they're trying to do their yoga I and it turns into the, like a jumping jack session for them. But um, to what you're saying, I mean, it's teaching them a way of life. It's teaching them a healthier lifestyle. And I'm all good with that. But for me, that self-care in the morning is, whatever my smoothie or my juice is. And that is kind of my self-care and my way of doing it in the morning for myself. I love it. You know, what's so cool too, is I I would love to see how this resonates with different people, because like we all talked about a little, a little nuance or a little different thing that works for each of us individually. Right. And the idea that it's, there's a lot of options. There's a lot of opportunity. It's really about finding what 
sticks and what feels good for each person and then doing it consistently, right? That's the key is, is, is finding something that you actually enjoy and that you see some value in doing and then just sticking with it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree. I agree. I, I had, um, I'll explain, I'm going to share something about my history that I don't know if anyone else has been doing this. Someone had to been doing this. And by the way, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. I want to make yep. sure that my volume's okay. All right. So, um, once of my history with food and with exercise, cause we've got food and we've got exercise here. And I think, and then for me, it's about, you know, my mind power and what I do. I had made a decision two years ago that I wanted to really understand nutrition for my body, what was going to work for me and really start engaging myself in nutrition. And, and I made that whole year of 2000, this is 2017. So that's 2016. I made that whole year. It was last year, actually. It was all about eating properly and all the things that you'll be, people learn. Once I really focused on that and stayed consistent as the word, that's the key word in, in everything that we're saying here today. Whatever you learn is going to be about being consistent about what feels right for you. And when I did what I did, it, it, you know, there's going to be challenges and, and, and some hardship and you go through withdrawal and whatever it is that you want to try to do new to you're going to have a withdrawal, but when you're ready to be consistent and do it, um, that helped me to do this every single day, to do the thing I was going to do every single day and push through that uncomfortable feeling. I, I learned so much from doing that. And then this year was about fitness. And I tell you, when you say, when Amanda, when you say it's about moving, making sure you do something in the day, I only just engaged myself earlier this year in the first quarter of the year where I had made myself hold myself accountable. And I had a girlfriend of mine who was also holding me accountable. We were holding each other accountable to commit to doing some exercise, some type of exercise for a certain length of time every day. And it's a challenge. And I think that if we can have, if we can get everyone on board to thinking about what the commitment that they can make for 30 days, just to go with 30 days for the sake of it, you know, you could say 21 days because they say that makes a habit, but just go 30 and um, find the thing that, like Amanda said, and Tiffany too, find the thing that you can actually handle, that you can do every single day for 30 days, knowing that you've got a light at the end of the tunnel. If your mind is feeling all funky about it, you know that it's not forever. It can be for 30 days. However, what ends up happening is when you do the 30 days and you do it with discipline, so it turns in many things turn into forever. You suddenly aren't interested in the other ways that you were doing things. And for me, the exercise thing has really made a difference in my life that I can't emphasize what you said enough that do it consistently and you'll start seeing results. And, and I hope more and more people get engaged with movement because that is key alongside with uh, nutrition. Yeah. The consistency yeah. Um, part of it is I'll let you go in a second, Amanda is uh, our brain will regrow the synapses. So mm -hmm. scientifically, um, the, the consistency will regrow new patterns in the brain. So when you were talking about the path in the beginning, Anita, it truly yeah. waves a path in the brain and it regrows. And then if you do 20 minutes of movement, yoga, stretching, exercise, it will actually release growth hormones. Mm -hmm. And so people right. that have an autoimmune condition or need to have cell regeneration. So what were you going to say, Amanda? I was going to say, I think one of the keys that I found, um, in, you know, for myself and working with a bunch of other moms is that starting small, right. And I, I, I I'm guilty of sometimes wanting like, Oh, you know, I've got this great idea. I want this big change in my life or for my kids or for my family and, and, and want to, bite off a big chunk, right? And I think the key is knowing, giving yourself permission to start small and gain that momentum. Think of it like um, coming down a ski hill, right? Like at the very top, when you're just kind of getting started, getting your skis over the tip, you're kind of just starting off and then you gain that momentum. Like, just like you said, Tiffany, once that pattern has been created, once those neuro, that neuroplasticity has adjusted in your brain, that it becomes more efficient, it's easier to then add on and also to have what I call an anchor for a new pattern or a new action. 
have it tied to something that is already a part of your routine that you just automatically do. Like for me, an anchor is brushing my teeth. I always know that I will do my stretches at a minimum. It sounds weird, but I know I'm not going to leave my house without brushing my teeth. And I know that I will move my body before I brush my teeth. So that's like an anchor for me. For someone else, it may be like an anchor could be something that they do on their cell phone, like setting a certain timer and their, their, their phone's going to bing at them for for some, a reminder about something, but having some type of anchor or some type of consistent pattern where it's almost like automatically built into your day that you don't have to then think back and remember like, Oh, wait a second. Did I remember to do like, maybe your new habit is going to be, um, um, I don't know, starting to spend at least 15 minutes reading a book or something that you want, you're interested in learning about. But if you don't have that anchor to be like, I'm going to, I'm going to spend my 15 minutes reading around a certain activity or a certain time of day or a certain reminder, you may get all of a sudden to the end of the night and you're like, wait, did I remember to read today? I don't know. And it can throw you off. But if you have an anchor around a specific part of your day, that makes it easier to remain consistent and to actually stick with it. I think that's good. I think that, you know, if Great people can identify what that, an what that anchor can be, then you could truly, you could use that not just for the concept of movement and exercise, but you could probably do that for any tasks that you need to be able to accomplish in work and as a mom, all the different roles that we have to play. So that's a really, mm -hmm. really good contribution. I like that. So if I want to remind people, because we've had a lot of new people join on the Facebook Live, is if you've got questions, because Michelle just posted that she really likes the idea of creating new behaviors and to have an anchoring behavior. So great tip, Amanda. But if you've got questions and you're on the live stream on Facebook, you can put those in the comments. We can see that. And then, okay, so I had another thought pattern and then I got interrupted for a slice of ham. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I don't remember. So what other notes did you have, Anita, to cover? Um, I wrote down, I was trying to write down the kind of regimen that I hold and that I share with a lot of the clients that I work with when it comes to, you know, we, we all come forward in wanting to do better with ourselves in terms of eating and exercise and just being moms. And we have a certain standard that we're at. And let's say our standards here. And whenever we have the standard, this is where our mindset is. And then we have to find a way to elevate that mindset to a better, higher power so that everything that we do is in a much better level to be victorious. So whatever the goals are, we can, we can actually have an equation in our mind that tells us, I just have to do this, and I know this is what I have to conquer, and then I get it. And the goal is achieved. And sometimes we know that we have to deal with options, and there's different avenues we have to take and there's curveballs that come our way but we want to keep approaching things in more of a warrior mindset status because we're moms we have to manage so many different things we hold these roles that are really really important for the growth of our children and for whatever we decide to contribute you know contribute to our our kids as well as ourselves so um I, the the thing i think that's really important is when we think about our mindset when you learn what to do in eating when you learn what to do with exercising you have to see if you can identify what's going to be productive for you the word productive is really really a good actionable word when you think about wanting to achieve something and um i had written six points if i can share those six points and i'll try to share them very shortly and i can always expand on them at another time but um the first thing that you want to do, if I think about like what powers do we need to engage in to create a powerful self-care regimen in terms of just the mindset. This is not about you eat food first and then you do this next. That's all going to be however you want to design it. But the first thing you want to do is have recognition. That's number one, just the idea of recognition. If you can recognize and identify what the needs are versus the wants. You have to be able to understand as a mom that we've got needs and we've got wants. And sometimes we put our wants before our needs because we just want, you know, like just, that, that's what you do. You, you get, we get, I'm going to use the word lazy, but it's not to insult anybody. I get lazy too. But if I want to see a change, if I need to see a change, then I have to engage myself into the needs. So to identify that, like what's, what is going on? This is how I'm going to identify what's going on in my world right now. What are the challenges that I'm dealing with? What's really happening in my reality? and identify them. The second thing was, then you get your education. 
either A, you're going to know, you're going to just know what you need to do. In other areas, doing a little research, talking to your friends who are already accomplishing the thing you want to accomplish, uh, reading certain articles, like I mentioned, TED Talk. Sometimes there's some really good inspirational words, and you needed that one sentence in that 15-minute talk that just gave you everything you needed. So educate yourself with the knowledge to either reinforce what it is you want to do or educate brand new information. I didn't know I could look at it that way. Uh, then the challenges part is when you go into this recognition of what your knowledge is, you have to be aware of what your challenges are. So if you're talking about eating better, what, you know, if, if Tiffany's going to share this information with you, you want to be able to know right now, I know I'm going to suck at this. I know I'm not going to be able to like you. If Tiffany says you can't have any pizza forever, which I'm not saying she's saying that. And I like pizza. I know that's going to be a problem for me. So how do I attack that challenge? How do I overcome it? So when you have that knowledge ahead of time, when you're in your planning stages, you can work with what your challenge is instead of acting more as the victim. You can look at it as a warrior that's like, I know this is going to come. I know I'm not supposed to have this right now. I know I'm doing a regimen. This is how I'm going to handle it when it happens. I can do the following things, A, B, C, and D. Number three once you get yourself to the sense of knowledge, education, understanding of who you really are, now you want to set the, the pace of building a belief. I think a lot of times we get ourselves involved in doing things, and you see this always happen at the end of the year, where we talk about what? Resolutions. Oh, I'm going to do the following things. These are all my resolutions. And I, I, I have an issue with resolutions because you could think today is the first day of your year and just go gusto and you'll accomplish your goals. So I don't like to wait till January. However, if that happens, the point I want to make is you can create the idea, you can speak it and you could say, I'm going to do it. But if you don't believe in it, it won't stay consistent with you. It won't take you all the way to the finish line. So you have to truly believe. And that's why I had the education part beforehand, because a lot of times we just say that we're going to do things because we just feel good about it. And we want those certain things, but we don't have enough information. We don't have the anchor information that, that Amanda said. We don't have the, the structure and the education and the knowledge to help us believe in the point and the purpose of what we're doing. What do we really want to do? So building that belief system is really, really key. Then number four, that's where you set your action plan. I don't think anyone should set an action plan until you've got your belief system down right and you know who you are, what your challenges are going to be, and how you're going to approach it. Then you can set your action plan. After you do your action plan, you hit number five. And number five is enforcing with discipline. We discipline our children because we want them to be fantastic American citizens. If I don't know if this is around the world, but citizens of the world. You know, you want your children to be amazing. So what do you do? You enforce and you enforce with what? Proper discipline. If we can do that with our kids, we can do that with our the inner kids within us. Our little toddlers that are like, I want to have a piece of chocolate. <laughs> you want to be able to enforce a sense of discipline to everything you just put together. All the education you get, got, gathered, all the information about your challenges and how to overcome them. And now your belief system is so strong. You got to enforce it. And um, a lot, um, number six, just, uh, you know, I mentioned this earlier, you want to hold yourself accountable and sometimes you can get an accountable buddy, find a buddy that'll help you hold yourself accountable, find a way to make sure that, you know, you really want this to happen. Then with your mindset, you want to have someone help you hold yourself accountable. If you can find a better way that you can hold yourself accountable, then that you can do that as well. But I've learned that, that human interaction having that best friend or relative or someone that you can really, that can inspire you. It's nice to be able to get tag team with someone, or if you need a coach, you've got three people here that are happy to help you in any way we can. So you want to get yourself engaged in that sense. Um, the last thing I would say is that I'm going to leave it with this last part here. I've just told you all those different points and they are very, very, very important, powerful points that make you so incredibly strong and it will help you attain your goal. It's work. It makes your, it makes yourself train your brain hardcore, but you're going to win every time you do these things. So that means the last thing you need to do. And it's the most important thing you need to do is celebrate your achievements through each step of the way celebrate it because if you just look at it like, oh, oh, 
I got through it. It was horrible. I'm going to call my friend. Okay, you can do that. But if you can look at it more like I did this, it wasn't easy, but I achieved it. Celebrate it. Do something really special for yourself that doesn't involve going against the grain. It goes into helping yourself be even better and talk about it. Journal it. Like Amanda talks about journaling certain things. Journal your victories. This is good stuff you want to look back at. And that's how, that's where I'll stop right there. I think that um, those are the types of things I think will really elevate your sense of mindset to be able to engage in all the different um, goals you'd like to achieve through this type of a platform. Yeah, and one thing I'm going to kind of go off on a different note. One thing I always think of at this time of year as a mom, you know, sometimes, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes at the end of the year, you kind of get to that that place end of the summer where you're like, okay, I'm ready for the kids to go back. I need some space. I need a break or whatever. And I find myself remembering, I haven't always done this and I still don't always do this, but remembering like just to take those moments to give them a hug, like before they walk out the door, just give my girls a hug. And, and to like, we make a point of 100.3 has this, like, I, I think it's called, oh gosh, I can't even, I'm not going to remember it now, but it's like, they do prank phone calls every morning at like 6 45 7 45 and 8 45 so we had this routine last year of always making sure we tuned into the radio 100.3 just to listen to the cheesy funny prank phone calls to laugh like because I'm like if I can set my girls up to like kind of just chill out so they don't feel so rushed and stressed and anxious you know before they're heading off for the day and I can kind of just relax a little bit is it like you said, Anita, is remembering to just kind of have those moments of ease, like whether you're celebrating, hey, you know what, I got up 10 minutes earlier this morning, and I actually did take a little bit of quiet time for prayer, or I did take time to do some stretches as a mom for myself. Great, awesome. And remembering to like, have fun with your kids and laugh because when they're gone, and we kind of get busy with the hustle and bustle of the go, go, go and do this and remember this homework and remember this folder and this permission chip. You know, it's easy to kind of lose touch with those those simple moments of actual authentic connection and joy. I love that Amanda said that because you know what you're saying that you're doing that I, I'm going to just kind of put it into like a the, the, I, as a mom, what would your default emotion be for your children? Uh, that might be a question you want to ask yourself mm. because the default in some parents is, I would say, confusion, frustration, irritation, where it's like, come on, it's, you know, five more minutes left to go before school starts. Let's get going. How many times do I have to tell you, get in the car right now? Did I ask you to do? And, and this, this rhythm of discussion, this is all love that I, I know that there are parents out there that talk this way. I don't think that you don't love your children. I think you say that because you love your children. You want to train them right. You almost get into this military ask let's get going because they're slower than necessary and they're not going in the pace that you want them to go and i really believe that if we can start changing the way our perspective is to engage in a more love filled default where we can encourage our children look at the situation and see how we can creatively change this where if your default amanda is Let's chill. Let's have a moment where we can hug. Sometimes that 30 second, five second hug changes the mood for the children. It makes them feel like I'm ready to listen to you. And it really makes the pace go better for your day. So maybe if we looked at what our default emotion is, just for ourselves, just to kind of take accountability of our emotions, is my default like da, 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 anxiety, anger, frustration? And if it is, what are the steps we need to take to kind of get our mind to a place where it's like, I'm going to say this. I'm going to act this way. I'm going to be a love filled. I'm going to have a love filled default and encourage and use those types of, of methods to um, have the kids enjoy. And you know what? It, it, it is reciprocating. When you do that, you will slowly start to see the, the reaction being uh, calm and, and better. Mm -hmm. Tiffany, what's your, what's your like tip for being, you know, kind of like you said, Anita mentioned that like default, mood or that emotional place in the morning what works so, well for you we have because I was the mom that Anita I was like oh my goodness that sounds like me last fall um I, I was, was that like crazy that too I had to change my name I would get up early I we had you know we have our kids are at school at 7 30 in the morning so for a lot of people are like oh my gosh and it was crazy ridiculous and um biggest game changer for us was we added music Yes. So when I get up now in the mornings, I have an Amazon uh, radio app on my phone 
And that, so I do my morning thing before I'm even in the shower, the phone is playing music so they can hear it from about anywhere. And then we moved into breakfast instead. So the other thing, a lot of people know this, but many of you probably don't. My kids, the majority of them have food allergies. So I can't do a box of cereal and milk in the morning. Just doesn't happen. So we have to actually physically, me or my husband, cook some sort of breakfast every morning or feed them like fresh fruit and leftovers or something. Um, so what we moved into is getting an organic uh, gluten-free oatmeal that we have. We purchased it from a farm in Wyoming and they, but um, PS truck drives it over and they're always like, the brown truck's here, mom. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the brown truck comes to our house about every day. It's pretty sad. But um, that was a... Uh, I, a kind of a changer for us is because I grew up where we would boil water and you would hear the tea kettle. So I don't have to set an alarm clock anymore for my daughters because I turn the tea kettle on and when they hear the kettle whistle, they know it's time to come down from upstairs. So whether they're awake doing whatever in their bedroom, that is the signal where, hey, morning needs to start. I need to show up at the table talking to me about that over the summer she's like do you guys actually eat at the table and I'm like we eat every meal at the table um, yeah we do too it's the internet's in and out but um so yes um but to me that's important that music and actually sitting down to eat breakfast around the table um mm -hmm. and having a morning conversation love that love that beautiful. you you know music has been something that kind of recently come into our life too and not always but it's just my daughter's really into dance so they started playing the music all the time and it just it does it just elevates your mood and it kind of gets you like you're all kind of bopping to the beat at the same rhythm and you know it's like a it's game changer and then the other thing is um so how you always tell your kids when you send them out you send them out and they're not like alone or that you're not you know you always love them and they're always for my girls they needed a symbol and I always, last year we would take and we would draw hearts on the backs of their hands. And I know some people on here are like non-toxic, crunchy moms. I won't call you out by name, but um, they would get on me. But anyway, I would use a marker and I was drawing a heart on their hands so it wouldn't wash off at school. And then I found a necklace recently that was, for me, a shape of a moon. And it says, I love you to the moon and back. And so they know, like, when I'm wearing that, like, in the morning, they'll come up and they'll rub it. And it's kind of cute. But and they'll be like, I love you to the moon and back, mom. And it's just kind of become this repeating pattern whenever we kind of go our separate ways in the mornings. That's wonderful. I love yeah, that. That's, you can, cool. that, that's what's what's, you know, each one of you have all of us have our own different patterns that, that kind of come along mm -hmm. with the way our, our, our children's personalities are you know, and, and how they engage with us. And I, 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 I third support on music because we play salsa music in the house. I got a thing about salsa music and I play it when I clean the house. I play it when I cook. Um, mm -hmm. And of course we play other songs too, but it's, it does. If, if anyone has Amazon or you want to have another way of doing it, get a playlist together, you know, call it whatever you want to call it. Maybe it's like getting mom through the day playlist, whatever you need, but put those, put those songs together look for new songs and just create that. I created a playlist called anger management oh. <laughs> I called it because, you know, some things can just really get to you and frustrate you. And when that happens, this is the, you know, I have two kinds. I have one anger management playlist that caters to identifying and, and, relating to my anger like i get you okay that's okay it's not crazy songs but really really strong songs that really help me um i exercise better if i if i you know i use boxing gloves and if i go and work out like i have a really really good thing with that i have another kind of anger management which is very soft and relaxing kind of like okay nita that happened yeah. you are loved <laughs> okay Tiffany, i have to ask no. you that silly who is that in the background trying to show us a picture what was that? Uh, so Lily came out to silently show us her book that she made about I don't think it's called it up. I sent so her back. Oh, I want to see. So, yes, they've been studying the eclipse in the solar system. They started <laughs> back on Thursday, so they've had two half days and then a full day today. Yes. Yes. It's adorable. 
Um, okay, so we're rounding out at the end, which is crazy, but top five throughout the whole day, self-care things that you do for your own self. All right, you want me to start? Mine is Go for it. journaling in the morning, moving my body every day in some capacity, meditating. I always meditate. Usually, actually, I usually meditate before I pick up my daughters from school. I take a break. I've been doing work. I work from home. And I, and, and so before I go to pick up the kids from school, I meditate. And that actually gets me kind of grounded and centered to then move forward into the afternoon. Um, eating well. Again, I always have a smoothie. I'm, I'm like you, Tiffany, always have my, my healthy smoothie to start the day and go to bed early. I'm in bed by no later than 10 o'clock. All right. Wow. You're good. You're good. <laughs> Anita, what are your five? my top five, um, I make sure to wake up at the time that I engage myself to wake up in. There's a certain uh, regimen I have to wake up by now. It's a uh, five 30 that I wake up. So I wake up at that certain time. I engage myself. So that's one. I engage myself with, uh, the deep breathing. It's a gratitude breath in the, in the daytime and a decompression breathing in the evening. It's the same thing. It's just a different way of me viewing it so that I could, take in the energy of the morning and go through my day and I can decompress all the energy of the things that have gone through the day that are challenges and frustrations, but then allow myself to let my soul rest when I go to sleep. So I'm very grateful. And I have, I have my time where in the evening, that's what I do. So um, I'll just call that the, 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 the breathing exercises. And um, number three, you know, I do make my bed. I think it's very important to make your bed and I make my bed and I take that very, very seriously. I enjoy it. It's my custom of doing so. Uh, number four, movement as, uh, and, and we can talk about other kind of movement, but I'm talking about the exercise movement that we talked about. So making sure that I engage myself in some level of movement through each and every day, which is really important to me now more than it ever was. And finally, I'm going to say when it comes to the nutrition, what am I putting into my system throughout the day? I'm really keeping myself aware that, you know, it's very hard. And I, I, I quote this from one of the, the health coaches that I've worked with that she had said, it's very hard to be healthy and to eat healthy in an unhealthy world. The, the world that we are around, the community that we're around, especially when you're, you're a mother and you have children, you go to parties, you can't get away from how other people live their lives. It's just the way they are. You go to restaurants, this is what they eat. You go to the schools and the teachers offer foods. And there's a lot of hard things that are in our world. So to be able to engage in eating healthy and, and bringing things with you so that you don't feel like you are stuck. So that was something that became regimented for me because I'm always out and about. And next thing you know, I'm hungry. So I just got another. <laughs> so that would be my fifth thing is, is making sure that I eat well, um, eat consciously. Okay. So I love those. Um, Janelle said me too on the movement. Um, I do All right. Know. So my top five, number one for me is definitely clean eating, um, being very rigid and very disciplined around my food. Number two would be movement, um, five to six days a week, at least, if not all seven, even if I'm just doing yoga on the weekends. Um, number three is water. Water is really important for me and it keeps me going. It keeps me energized and um, it also gives your skin a nice glow. I mean, there's all these benefits to water. We can do a whole post on water. Um, <laughs> number four for me is decluttering. And it speaks to what you're saying, Anita, about the environment around us. Whether it's, you know, physical stuff or it's mental stuff or it's just people in the environment, just kind of cleaning that out and getting it away if it's not a good thing. And then the fifth thing for me is I actually soak in Epsom salts three nights a week. Oh, uh, and that's another it's, it's really good to take all never, the toxins out yes and it also gives you magnesium which most of us are short in magnesium because we don't eat dirt um and it's not necessarily peaceful so if your mom watching this and you're like oh that sounds so great no because i don't know who who when you have toddlers gets to go in the bathroom by yourself but it still is um it's detoxing for sure and it helps you get a good sweat and it's just fairly healthy 
So the other thing before we close, they're all laughing on the Facebook chat, but it's true, Janelle, you will never get to go to the bathroom alone until your kid's like four. It's just how it is. <laughs> um, I want people, if they're meeting uh, you for the first time, to actually be able to find your business pages on Facebook to find you in case they have additional questions. I know they can ask questions in the group. They can ask questions below this video. But Amanda, can you tell us exactly how to find you online? Yes, absolutely. Um, the easiest way is to go to www.hinmans.com. And that's spelled H-I-N-M-A-N-S.com. And I'm also on Facebook, Amanda Hinman. You can look me up there. Fabulous. And Anita, how do we find you online? Because I'm going to eventually get this on YouTube somehow. So on the website, I do have a website that's innerscopeconsulting.com, and that's I-N-N-E-R-S-C-O-P-E, -N -N -E and the word consulting.com. Not to be confused with Interscope, that's a record company, which would be nice to be earning money from the record company the way they do, but <laughs> this is Innerscope. We're going to look within, is it why I called it that, and um, in, in, in Interscope Consulting, you can navigate and enjoy the information that's there if you're interested in learning anything more that there is an area that says discovery session and you can go ahead and tap into that and see what more that there is and we could talk about that a little bit more later but um as for on facebook you know there's in, in that social media platform you could certainly reach me there there is a interscope consulting as well um, page so reach me out there get connected with me i would love to see you and um I think I'm, I've been doing my live streams on my personal page, but I think I might be migrating it over to the business side so we can share. I love your daughter. So adorable. Wonder Thank woman. you. The wonder woman. Yes. She notices your wonder woman. In it. <laughs> What's that? You have wonder woman hanging in your background. Yeah. That's my cape. <laughs> ah, we all need capes. I like that idea. You always have to have a wonder woman cape. This is I cape. love that. So uh, gfmomcertified.com is where you'll find me online or gfmomcertified on any social media platform. The um, other thing to keep in mind is we will be doing another live Zoom broadcast right on Facebook. Uh, Wednesday night, me and Anita will be teaming back up and coming back and talking about, at this point, my brain has lost it, but um, I'll post the topic in the morning. I'll look it up again. <laughs> and I'll post that. And we would love for you to continue to add um, other moms to the Facebook group and to get that up and going. And then I posted for everybody menus and recipes. You got some new things to try this week. It's all clean eating. So don't worry if you're like, oh, I, I can't eat dairy. I can't eat this. Uh, the menus that I posted are gluten-free, dairy-free, sugar-free. And don't freak out if you hear that and you're like, oh, my goodness, I still eat all those things. Give a few of them a try. Um, there's a few favorites in there. And if you want to try a morning smoothie like me and Amanda, there's a couple of different morning smoothie recipes in those menus. So I would encourage you to try it one morning. All yeah, right. I looked and it over today. They look good. I'm actually, I'm actually in the middle of my own two week cleanse. So I'm like, it's, it's always a good idea to kind of have a, a framework and a meal plan. It makes it easy for you. Yeah. So we're going to continue to post all kinds of fun stuff this week. Um, I've seen Amanda, you posted some videos and some great tips about your kids getting all their energy kind of out before they go to school. And so we'll be doing that all week. Do you guys have any last remarks before we close? I don't have any questions yet. No questions. I, think it's just, I want to say thank you, Tiffany, for putting this together and giving, you know, so many people an opportunity to meet all of us. And um, I really look forward to anyone who's out there that's watching this to engage as much as you can. This is a tough thing to do to be able to step forward and ask questions. But I think once you do, once you come up with maybe a plan and you maybe you wanna see if it works well for you or maybe you wanna get some information back from any of us, it's a good way to step, take that first step because the more and more you engage, the more you are gonna grow and it's going to help you gain your confidence to doing the next thing, going to the next level. Um, I really appreciate the opportunity to be a part of this and uh, I look forward to seeing all the growth that can take place from it. It was great. Yeah, I agree. Thank you, Tiffany. This was fun. And it's always great to connect with both of you lovely ladies. And uh, for all of us moms, um, I just think, remember that we, we all have each other's back, right? Women 
moms especially are so strong and so powerful. And that doesn't mean that we can't fall and feel guilty and feel bad some days because we all do. And even in spite of that, we're always doing the best that we can for our families. And, you know, just remember to love on yourself a little bit because we all deserve a pat on the back. <laughs> That's right. Absolutely. Thank you so, so much, guys. I truly appreciate it. I appreciate you taking time away from your families this evening to jump on here and give us this great value and content. Um, and appreciate you when I called and said, hey, you want to do this? You guys said yes. And you didn't really need it. Thank you for your patience as we've struggled <laughs> through my dislocation of my housing, but we're working through all of that. Um, so and again, we'll We'll go back and if you've got questions and you watch the replay, post them in the comments. We'll get through those tomorrow. And like Anita said, engage in the group this week. Um, take advantage of what you have, the opportunity you have to get to the experts and ask the real questions. And we'll um, see you all on the next live on Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Central. Thank you for joining us. Bye. 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 Let's see here.